Yo family, what's up? It is Kelante Gavin here and this is the Jesus and Jay's podcast episode number two. It's been crazy. The feedback has been crazy. The messages, the DMs, y'all, I mean, all in the DMs. <laughs> all in the dms i mean y'all are talking about yo this is good keep it coming the the comments um the encouragement i mean the excitement for the next and it's just y'all are just blowing me up and blowing me up and i'm just like yo this is crazy though so episode two is gonna be really good and i hope y'all are ready so strap up your seat belts y'all because uh today's topic is um i hope y'all ready y'all ready it is uh, know your shoe size <laughs> identity i mean this is a topic that has layers to it um there are levers and there are levels okay there are layers levers and there are levels to when it comes to identity some of us feel like we got it we know who we are um some of us don't know who we are and many of you probably in the lane with me I am still trying to figure out who I am. Now, before you get all scared and crazy, I'm this not this is not the sexuality podcast. This is not the dating podcast. So don't judge and assume. All right. I'm talking about knowing myself, just knowing myself, period. Like I and I believe when I get 70, I'll still be figuring out who I am. And I, I that's not a bad thing. And a lot of you need to be encouraged. That is not a bad thing that you don't know who you are. The world is not about to end, your life is not about to crash. Because you don't know who you are. But at the same time, for my believers, like there is an identity that we have in Christ. Uh oh, boom, I done lost some folks. Don't run from me. Wait, come back. <laughs> that we have, there is an identity that we have in Christ Jesus. And so I, I, I remember y'all like growing up and, and really trying to figure out, okay, I sing and I'm a musician, but what else is there to me? Because I always felt like, you know, being young and in church, we have, there are a lot of us that grew up and we were always forced either in the musician corner or on a dance team or singing in a choir or serving in youth ministry or just something, something that, that they'll force you in. And none of it was ever really finding out who we was. A lot of us know what we can do. Ooh, we know our strengths and our weaknesses. But today I want to talk about that identity piece. Like, are you open enough for me just saying, hey, what if there are some layers to you, whether it is business or your relationship, um, your 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 household, your family? Um, there are a few people you, you're dating right now. You feel like you just you you are you are on autopilot and you're letting loose and you going at it. But guess what? Could it be all of the dates and the conversations you've had with individuals have been left because not only do they don't know who they are, you don't know who you are. And it's hard to even how like, let's take a, a pause. How can you really be the best that you can be living in a question mark? <laughs> like so many of us are like, yo, I get what you're saying, but I know for a fact a lot of us are in the same boat right now. We are all living in a question mark like you, you. You know, first podcast, we talked about faith walkers. And if you didn't haven't listened to it, I need you to go listen to it. So stop listening to me right now and head over to the faith walkers because I don't want to dig too much. But if we really be honest, it even takes faith to live in the question mark, the unknown, like I talk about with faith in the first podcast of Jesus and Jay's uh, is just faith walking like you you're going to be in some seasons where you're going to move in some question mark seasons but i want to talk and deal with individuals who are under the sound of my voice and you watch me right now you're in the question mark of life or trying to figure out who am i what if i told you you may not know that question until you meet jesus i'm talking about afterlife what are you talking about bro i don't know I, i'm still trying to get it myself Fail. Or what if I tell you, you probably won't find out until something bad happens. What if it takes something crazy to happen for you to figure out, whoa, the whole time I allowed this to happen, blah, blah, blah. And it took these things to happen for me to be like, yo, this is now. I'm not talking about finding out who you are because of the negativity. And then it's like what was done to you is that's who you are. No, I'm talking about knowing what you could take and knowing what you won't take any more or knowing um where you are in the season of your life like like man y'all ever heard that saying like god won't put more on you than you can bear shucks 
man, yeah. Like, you, the question mark. I'm just throwing out stuff. I know I'm ribble jamble, but we're going to bring this all stuff together. But I really want to be an encouragement to my young people. I want to be an encouragement to even the older people who are seasoned in this game. Like, you, you kind of on this whole lane of, yeah, I don't know who I am, but at the same time, I'm finding out and maybe you're in the greatest season of your life because you're like, you like living in the question mark of, I know who I am, but I'm still finding out more about myself every day. And a lot of you, you have a headache right now because you just want to know it all today. What if I tell you, you can't know it all today? Like chill out. Like it actually reminds me of a uh, story of David, David, uh, and I think it's in first Samuel somewhere he is uh, in the field, man, with the with the sheep. Uh, the prophet is on his way to his dad's house, Jesse's house, a house where he's been overlooked, a house where he's invited to dinner, but he don't feels feels like or feel like, excuse me, that he's invited into the family. I'm talking about the same David that we sing his psalms, but we don't look at the dysfunction and the heartache and the confusion and the abandonment of the rejection in his life because he's anointed to be king but when he's anointed he's anointed after rejection or shall i say in the midst of rejection like his dad brings all his sons to the party and the prophet goes to pour the oil and the oil don't pour because he know God told him to come to the house. Hey, I took go to the house, go anoint the king. He says, the prophet tells Jesse, hey, where's all your sons? Surely this can't be it because the oil ain't pouring. He say, uh, yeah, you talking about that boy in the backyard tending to the sheep, to the dog? <laughs> yeah, that guy. I, the prophet said, I'm not sitting down till he come. And for some of you, the reason why you got to find out who you are, even if it's in the midst of rejection and abandonment, and I don't mean to put a little Mr. Preach on this thing, is because there's somebody that can't sit down until the oil is poured on your head and everybody that rejected you is aware of it Amen. good god almighty some of you don't even realize that the reason you've been rejected is because there's about to show a season is about to come up there's a season coming up where your oil is about to be showcased and it's going to be showcased in the midst of everybody that ever rejected you i feel something right there <laughs> in my term terminology is the holy spirit i feel somebody is really being blessed because you have been rejected long enough and you don't feel like your oil can flow but what if i tell you maybe you're that david maybe the oil ain't flowing because there's a specific place you got to get to in life to show up there and then the oil can pour can be poured and then when it's poured it's going to be poured in the midst of everybody that tried to count you out because if you do some digging in david's story man his father had been jacked up man oh they had a jacked up family all oh, his sons probably looked good and some of them were strong and fit and and maybe maybe they were god-fearing people of course we can see that in scripture they were god-fearing people but uh, you know a lot of us got a problem because we're in the household of people that are god-fearing but they don't talk to me they overlook me they have never encouraged me they have never pushed me to be limitless they have never pushed me to do the things that i feel like i'm called to do and i feel stuck we've all been there and on today, I feel like this is going to bless you because you're going to have to be encouraged within yourself to know even though people overlook you and have counted you out, God has counted you in, have counted you into a destiny and a purpose that has been a master copy of his will for your life not your mom not your dad not your husband not your wife and even if you are married even um, if you have a business even like you got to understand that there is a unity that you can have with God that even your spouse that y'all will operate in such a oneness that both of your callings complement each other like it complements each other in such a way to where you will begin to see God move in your life because now you're actually operating in that oneness, in that one flesh, in that that one faith to say, hey, babe, we got to stick this out. You know, hey, hey, staff, I know we've been we've been 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 struggling trying to figure out what's our next vision for the next move. I know I know I'm trying to figure out how do I 
allow myself to, you know, uh, hire the assistant? How do I get to a place where I'm now uh, reconsidering some things that I once reconsidered in my business that now I'm, I've outgrown that place? Now I can't go everywhere. Now I can't say all types of things. I can't hang around certain people. It's because I'm finding out a, about who I am today um, I, that I wasn't yesterday. And so today I want on this podcast to encourage you because you're stepping outside of the question mark into the exclamation point, into the exclamation point of your identity, the exclamation point of, of not just your identity, your call and your purpose and what you're called to do. And you cannot not allow the question mark season, the question mark people, the question mark circumstance, the question mark dilemmas and delays and denials cause you to forfeit you living in an exclamation point, exclamation mark season to say you know what god is going to get the glory exclamation mark hey i know i didn't know and i came out of an ex uh, a question mark season but i am healed exclamation point i am enough exclamation point i know i've been rejected question mark oh man am i love question mark oh my god am i really am i really called question mark who am i question mark who who are you you are are amazing exclamation point you are phenomenal exclamation point you are beautiful come on exclamation point you are called quest exclamation point yeah you have got to step outside of the question mark season and put an extra ex a little i can't get it out y'all exclamation point you know what i'm trying to say exclamation point all right that's what you are <laughs> Right now, hey, and guess what? Even though you may go in a season where you might mess up some words, it's all right. You won't mess up that season because you'll know how to value that because you value who you are. And for some of you, not just who you are, but who you are in Christ Jesus. Bob says you're a royal nation. Come on, a holy nation, excuse me. You're a royal priesthood. Like you're peculiar people. You know, like like you are called. Like you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You know, you're the lender, you're the bar. God has placed a demand on your life. He's placed a grace, a call, an anointing that only you could could handle. Like only you could go through those things. Only you could be 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 just I mean, faced with the challenges that your mom or your dad or your siblings could not take. God allowed you to be graced for it. And I know it doesn't feel good. And I know you're like, man, I feel like an outcast. Yo, I feel like done. I feel, excuse my terminology, I feel effed up, man. I really I, I really feel like something wrong with me sometimes. Now, ain't nothing wrong with you. It's just sometimes you can beat yourself up to a point where you are so in a dark season, you don't even feel like there can be no light. And you don't even realize that that is where light is most important. That is where light is most powerful. Where there is the darkness is not even a measurement. You can't measure it. Oh, my God, but you can measure light. You can measure how far it travels. You can measure the intensity of it. Oh, man. You can measure that. You can't measure darkness. But what you can measure is the light. And not only are you walking into a light season, not only do you serve the light, not only do should you be aware of the light, that God is light. He isn't just love. He's light. Jesus is light. He's the light of the world. But you got to know that you are a light. And the only reason why you are a light, the only reason why you're in your exclamation uh, point season, like, is because you know the light. And so I want to encourage you on the day under the sound of my voice. Take the moment today to examine yourself and just thank God. Thank him like, Lord, I really just thank you. Thank you for the day that you have given me to be a light. And even though I can't see it and even though I don't feel like it, help me to become more aware of that so that I can be who I'm called to be. That even though my identity is a question mark, man, I know that this is not the end, but it is the beginning. It's the beginning to where I value who I am, like value you first. Maybe the reason why others are walking over you is because you've been walking over you. Like value yourself enough to where you don't allow things to happen. And even if they do happen, maybe I got some realists out there who accept things the way they are and they deal with it accordingly, whatever, whatever the case may be. Maybe you're this person like, man, I just people show me who they are. That's it. And I just take it. I'm that person. I can take it. Well, what if I tell you, hey, come out of that and really value who you who you are, value who you are so that you can do what you're called to do. Be successful in every area of your life and know that you are enough. You are loved. You are chosen. You are called. And I promise you that everything around you may not look like it. But oh, man, if only you knew what behold what is to behold in the next few seconds or the next few minutes or that's my crazy faith or in the next few years of your life man i will live life today like there is no tomorrow 
So be encouraged, family. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Listen, I know it's been hard. It's been tough. But you're going to make it. Hey, matter of fact, we going to make it. So, family, thank you for joining me on today. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful week. And remember, I love you. God loves you best. He created me to love you the best way that I can. And this was Jesus and Jay's podcast with yours truly, Kelante Gavin. Peace out, family. And until next week. Yo, what's up, family? I am Kelante Gavin, and this is the Jesus in the Jesus 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 Jesus